with our uh, today's class, uh, today is 27th April 2024, and this is our class number 34 and 35. Just to bring the class number on in the videos uh, uh, correct, therefore I have numbered it as 34 and 35. Okay, so have you opened opened up your spider IDs? So let's start with today's class. This is a very good book. You can, if you are interested, you can get this book from me. It's a, you know, higher, a bit higher level difficult book, but uh, with patience and with dedication, you can understand this complete book and it depends on your own effort. So we will, we are, I'm basically using this book uh, for these lectures on scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is a library uh, that is used for uh, the machine learning. And we have started machine learning classes actually. So in machine learning, we haven't done anything yet. We have we are just you know about to start. We are just starting the machine learning. We haven't studied any machine learning algorithm or technique so far, but we will uh, study a lot of techniques and their implementation in Python. So I hope you guys can uh, hear me. Is uh, and can you see the screen as well? Please confirm. Yeah. Okay. So again, a bit of uh, you know what we um, saw in the last class. Scikit-learn. It's a powerful Python library that is used for machine learning, and it's an open-source machine learning library, and it supposed supports supervised as well as unsupervised learning. We have uh, talked about the supervised and unsupervised le supervised learning concepts in the last class, and. Uh, it also provides various tools for model fitting, data pre-processing, model selection, model evaluation, and many other utilities. And uh, Scikit-learn often uh, abbreviated as SKLearn is a free and open source software library in Python, and it provides a comprehensive set of tools and algorithms that are used for machine learning. And it is widely considered as one of the most popular and user-friendly libraries for machine learning tasks. That's the reason that we have started this journey of machine learning from scikit-learn instead of going to Keras or TensorFlow, etc. We will go to that later on. So first technique of machine learning that we want to, we, were, we are starting with today is the random forest. A random forest consists of decision trees. So the forest consists of, just like a forest consists of trees, a random forest consists of decision trees. So what it says is random forest is constructed using multiple decision trees and the final decision tree decision is obtained by majority votes of the decision trees. So in a uh, random forest, uh, basically we set up a forest that consists of a number of decision trees. These are just names. Otherwise, the thing is algorithm. There isn't any actual physical tree involved. These are just the names and the terms used over there. And uh, decision tree is something that looks like a tree when we draw it on paper. Therefore, the, they gave it a name of tree. Tree has branches and roots, etc. And random for forest, uh, forest is given name is perhaps given due to uh, the fact that uh, we use a number of decision trees. So the individual decision trees is making a decision. But what we do is we use a collection of those trees and we consider the majority vote. The major, if majority of the trees are deciding towards one thing, then we say that this must be the right answer. That is the basic logic of the random forest. So we will first talk about the decision tree, uh, and then we will go to the random forest in the next class. A random forest is like a team of decision trees working together. Each decision tree is a powerful tool for making predictions about, but they can be prone to overfitting and data can be trained. The data that they are trained on. Overfitting means that uh, you give a training data. Training data consists of the inputs and the required outputs. That if you give this input, you should get that output. If you give that kind of pair to a tree and it gives you correct answers, but when it gets overfitted, give you if you give it new data, unknown data, it will give you wrong answers. So that is called overfitting. Uh, I mean, if you want to train a decision tree, and you have a data with input as well as output that during the training process, we know what is the output, what is the outcome. Then uh, when you give it and it starts giving you the correct result after you train it. Again, training involves a lot of things that we have yet to study. 
so when it starts giving you the right answers for the training data but uh, sometimes you train it so much that it becomes overfit uh, when you give it new unknown data it simply fails so that is not a good thing we need to train the decision trees but we don't need to overtrain the decision trees this means uh, you know what it uh, what else is, is it says is this means that they might perform well on the specific data they saw during the training but struggle with the new data it's, uh, uh, let me give you an example there are the cases of people who perform very good in the school but when they go into the practical life they don't pre pre perform that well that is because they get overtrained overfitted overfit to the you know uh, academia so that is uh, something bad uh, again in artificial intelligence and machine learning as well so you have to train your uh, decision tree but to a certain level not beyond that getting my point yes or no yeah so uh, random forest consists of decision trees so first we will talk about the decision trees we will talk about a decision tree and then later on we will put them together to make our random forest so that the outcome depends on the voting of majority of the decision trees we can't just have one decision tree and you take it and use it for your ai or machine learning application that is not done we you take a collection of decision trees and then we uh, they vote and they they collectively vote on a particular uh, we take the majority vote and then we decide that that becomes the output of random forest so we have not started the random forest as such we are we are just you know on the basic constituent of that the random forest as a decision tree so uh, in a random forest we have a lot of trees a random forest is built from a large collection of individual decision trees again these are not physical trees and we are not talking about a actual physical forest it's just a name and terminology we have a set of uh, computer programs that we call the decision tree and the random forest these trees are grown on random subsets of the training data so when you have a training data when you will see one you will be able to recognize it we take parts of that data and we train parts of the decision trees on that data then after that uh, random features the other characteristic of the random forest is that random features when the when building at each tree only a random subset of all the features is considered at this each split point this injects some randomness and helps now what is that first of all what what is a feature feature you can think of as a characteristic suppose if you are uh, talking about uh, you know uh, uh classifying fruits into different groups then color can be one of the features smell can be one of the features weight can be one of the features features are the characteristics that your objects have if you are selling for example houses your houses location size its price this they can be features so we build each random tree on a random subset of the features we don't take all the features we just take pick up randomly some of the features and then we build our random tree on those features in this way we cover all the features uh, the other different trees cover other features in this way we have a lot of trees and then they make up the random forest so in random forest all the features are covered randomly selected so one decision tree one part of the random forest one part of the random forest in form of a program does not cover all the features and feature means the characteristics of your data like for example if you are categorizing or classifying images you have images of fruits and you want to classify them into different categories as whether they are apple oranges bananas then you check things like the color of the fruit in the image the shape of the fruit in the image and other things like that the texture of its skin etc uh, these are the features you can think of them as the as features then the third point it says is forest power haitham are you with me are you following me or is it difficult for you uh, most part things are right now very general it's they are not difficult they are just you know we are talking about general things that basic concepts or or the things the general parts of the algorithm we are not going into a lot of technical detail at the moment what are we actually talking about in here can you please summarize what i've just said in your own point in words in form of point maybe random forest where 
what is a random forest actually it's is it a forest consisting of trees no. or what is it is a individual what is individual uh, uh, if i if if i give you a random forest how uh, would it look like it code will it be uh, some drawings yes exactly it, it will be a, in form of a code so you basically uh, uh, you guys are actually learning to make that code write that code uh, uh, write that in a you know different way and uh, as a suit, suiting your task your problem at hand so that's actually the target to make you able to write your own random forest code there there is a code available but first you have to understand the technique but you know you have to understand it and then you have to uh, write it yourself means that you don't have to pick that up and then you just try to use it for your application you should be able to transform it to your suiting your application so uh, forest power the third point is once all the trees are grown when making a prediction the entire forest is consulted and uh, the entire forest is considered means that the trees are consulted and classification problems each tree votes for a class and the most popular vote wins like we will see an example next in regression problems the trees all make um, all, all make a prediction the average prediction is taken as the final output in case of regression problem where we have a we don't uh, split the data divide this data into categories rather we have continuous values at the output then we take the average of the outputs and the average is taken as the final output by combining the predictions of many trees each with slightly different more robust and accurate overall result compared to a single decision tree so we can't have just one tree and use it to for the decision purpose in problem case we have several uh, decision trees and then we take the average in case of regression and majority vote in case of classification so what's the difference between regression and classification problem any one of you can you briefly tell me that's a basic question actually yes can you please can you uh, aitam can you please tell me what is the difference between okay, okay uh, yes uh, ahmed please repeat regression versus what regression class and versus classification uh, uh what is what have, okay regression regression is more of a um continuous value well um classification is more like yes. a category yes and and in classification uh classification is more okay specific. You, okay yes okay yes yes yeah. Yes, exactly. Good. OK, so uh, uh, yes, uh, you, 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 uh, your answer was correct. So let's move on. Decision trees. Uh, let's let's just try to understand the concept. Uh, you can think of uh, decision trees as you can see the trees over here in this slide. Can you see the slide slide number nine? What do you see in this slide? Yeah. uh okay haitham can you please explain what's in this uh, can you explain this uh, figure what you guys can see in this figure what is it uh, what's here um, what's happening actually try to make sense out of it this this figure Yes, Haitham. Um, I. Yeah. I Good. Can you see? Know. Start from the left hand side. What is? What are there? Three trees. Okay, there are three trees. Then after that, there are arrows, and arrows are pointing towards what? 
pages. Okay, now, now if you uh, if you look at those arrows, what they actually that means you have a tree, then arrow, and it's pointing towards a peach. Trees making peach. Okay, what the what what I want to say over here is that you have a uh, some unknown fruit. We don't know what that fruit is. Okay. And uh, we want to know what that fruit is. We give, we ask a tree, we show that unknown fruit to the tree, and then tree gives us some answer. Now it says that it is a peach, it is an apple, it's a strawberry, whatever. So we give, do that, we show that uh, unknown fruit to a lot of different trees. Each of the, this tree represents a decision tree. Our program, our code of the decision tree, and then we have a lot of such codes and they all make a forest. So we ask the forest, forest that see, look at this. This is some unknown fruit and we want to know, we want to, uh, we want, we are, we are asking you that uh, please identify what fruit is this. So then the forest gives us a set of different answers. Some, some uh, trees say that it's a peach, some say it's an apple and some say whatever. Now what we do is, in this case, suppose two of the trees say that it is a peach and one of the trees says that it's an apple. So we say that two of the trees are saying that it's a peach and one is saying it's apple. So the majority vote says that it's a peach. So we accept the answer as peach that this unknown fruit is actually a peach. So this is what is happening. This is basic functionality of a decision tree. Now we don't actually have a physical tree and we don't actually show a physical fruit to it. We have some any problem and this is case of classification problem. We show the image of some unknown thing. Maybe it's a chair, a person or a car or road or whatever. And then we run it over our algorithm. We convert that into some data through camera and then we have we write a code and then we use that code and we ask that what it is and then it tells us. OK, hold on a second. So this is what the basic uh, logic behind this decision tree. So we will be considering just one tree at the moment and later on we will talk about the random forest in the upcoming class. Right now we are just on, we will try to understand that one single decision tree and then later on we will consider uh, the whole forest. So we right now we have not started random forest, we're just on the decision trees. And then decision trees make up the random forest. The decision tree is a powerful tool in machine learning that works like a flowchart to make predictions. It resembles a real tree with root node. The structure of the decision tree is like that of a physical tree. It's not a physical tree, it's just a piece of program, computer program. Root node uh, is a starting point that represents the entire, representing the entire data set. Internal nodes, these are the, known as the decision nodes. These nodes ask the question about the data based on the features like the uh, what temperature it is, what is the income, etc. Then there are branches. Each branch represents an answer, yes, no, high, low, to the question. Based on the tree. Now, if we look at a physical tree here, you can see that. First of all, we have this outlook, that is the root node. And then we have the branches and then we have these are the leaf nodes. They then give they're then connected to the final output that is no yes, the final decision. No yes is actually the decision over here. High low are the leaf nodes. So what it says is the leaf nodes are the terminal nodes that represent the final prediction, the classification based on the decisions made throughout the tree. How the, does a decision tree work? Before we dive into how a decision tree works, let's define some of the key terms. Root node, the base of the decision tree is the root node. Outlook in the example, you can see that. Splitting is the process of dividing the node into multiple sub nodes. You can see that a node is split into sunny, overcast, and etc. Then leaf node and decision node. When a sub node is further split into additional sub nodes, that is the decision node. You can think of maybe this wind as the decision node further splitting into strong and weak, etc. Leaf node when the um, when a sub node does not not further split into additional sub nodes, 
and uh, rep represents the final outcome. So in this case, you can see that this uh, week is the this leaf node. Pruning is the process of removing sub nodes of a decision tree. If you want to clean it and then you want to remove the un unneeded unwanted nodes, then you can use the pruning branch. A subsection of decision tree consists of melting multiple nodes. You can see this as a branch rain and then wind and this thing. This is one branch. So it's a very simple concept. It's just like you know, a sort of tree diagram. You have one thing we call it root node. Then it takes some decision based on the outcome of the decision. Uh, ask some question based on the outcome answer of that question. It splits its direction left, right, center, and we call those splits as the branches. And then after that, we have further nodes. Further nodes add more questions, and then based on their answers, we split up further. And in this way, this whole structure is constructed. This thing is called decision tree. It's that simple. Got it? Anything confusing or difficult in this? Or if you have understood everything, then please let me know what you have understood. And please read this paragraph also that's there uh, in that's here in this slide number 13. A decision tree is like a flowchart like structure. Read this as well. And can any one of you explain it to me? OK, first uh, let's read this paragraph and then I will ask you. A decision tree is like a flowchart like structure in which each internal node represents a test on the feature. Whether a coin is flipped, comes up head or tail, each leaf node represents a class label decision taken after computing all the features, branches and the and represent conjunctions of the features that lead to those class labels and so and so forth. OK, let me let's focus on this example. The first of all, you have the root node. We look at the outlook. Is it the we look at you look out of the window and see how is it looking? Is it sunny? Is it overcast? Is it raining? Well, what is the meaning of overcast? OK, uh, Sarim, can you please clarify? Because I, I don't use English that often. Can you please uh, clarify what is overcast? Sarim. Sarim, are you with us? OK, Ahmed, you please tell me. Uh, it means like cloudy. It like it looks like it's about to red. Uh, sorry, can you please repeat? Overcast is like when it's cloudy or it looks like it's about to rain. And uh, OK. So if you look out of the window and you see that, is it sunny? Is it like you know, cloudy? It's about to rain or is it raining? Or, or uh, it's uh, uh, they, they're basically what, what are they asking below the diagram? Let's the basic decision. Tree for uh, decision tree for decision making with labels rain or no. When, so this rain over here, the rain over here means that it's about to rain because they have to make a decision about whether it will rain or not. So uh, uh, I think I mean what I want to say here is that if you look out of the window and you see that it's sunny, in the other case you'll say that it's overcast, you have clouds and it's about to rain. And then there is, you know, third option is rain. What does this mean in this decision tree? Is it it does my question from you is that it does this mean that it's already raining or it's about to rain? And if it is about to rain, then why the need of the further, you know, asking that will it rain or not? Then the point is lost if it is already raining. So what do you say? Is it does this third condition mean that it is about to rain or is it raining? What do you say? It's an, it's not related to Python Python coding. It's not related to decision tree. It's just a common sense question. What do you say? The third option, rain. What does it mean here? Yes, Ayatam or and Ahmed, please tell me. What does this third uh, option mean here? If waters fall, 
fallen from the sky. Then it's already raining and we have to make a decision about we have we are basically making this decision tree to make a rain forecast that will it going to rain or not. But if it is already raining, then there's no point of making that forecast that it will rain. It's already raining. So that's my objection, actually. Yeah. So so therefore we say that uh, there the in the, the first root note says that you look at the outlook. How is the outlook after that you see that it's is it sunny? Is it overcast? It's cloudy. It's about to rain or it's you know, it's a, a cloudy overcast means that it is cloudy and then rain means that it is about to rain. Uh, I mean, everything is set and the dark clouds are there and it's just about to rain. So we are assuming that rain has not yet started because we have to make a forecast about rain. If rain has already started, then this uh, writing this rain, uh, the third option would not make any sense. Therefore, we are assuming that the outlook is such that there are dark clouds out and it's about to rain. And then we when we are making a, a forecast about whether it will rain or not. So this is this whole process with, that we have drawn over here is called a decision tree. Now, after sunny, you check the humidity. Is it humid? humid what, what is the humidity? You ask the question, what is humidity? The answer is high. The answer is normal. So if you say that you are already it's sunny out there and humidity is high, then the decision would be no, that no, it's not going to rain. And the, this is based on the, uh, the the data from, you know, uh, the what do we call it? The uh, med department based on and the or the you know the 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 science or the the science or the field of uh, that study the weather and climate from those uh, uh, knowledge and those those that science area we have as taken that information and be, and we are making constructing that decision tree based on that information so which says that when it is sunny and when it is humid and the humidity is high then it does not rain so based on that uh, uh, information, we are constructing our decision tree, which we will code in form of a, you know, machine member in Python program. So first of all, we look at the outlook. It's sunny, overcast rain. Then we say if it is sunny, then you ask the next question. Uh, is it humid uh, or the humidity level? Uh, how is the humidity level? The if you, you check it, that humidity level is high, then you will make a decision. No, it will not rain. If the humidity level is normal, then it will rain. Then after that, the sec second branch is overcast. Then when you have overcast, you have a thick clouds out there, then it's uh, uh, it will definitely rain. And then the third option is that it's, uh, you know, what we have assumed that it's about to rain and then you will check whether it is windy, wind is strong. Uh, the answer is no, it's not going to rain. If it is weak, yes, it's going to rain. So we have constructed a decision tree based on this scenario. Now let me uh, tell you something. If you give me five minutes, let me draw this. Uh, if you give me just two minutes, let me draw this on paint and show you another decision tree as well. Just give me five minutes. Okay, I'm back. Let me uh, explain this through another example. Let me connect. Wait a second. Okay. Is, uh, turn off your mic.
Okay, so where was I? Okay. Okay, so um, like for example, you have a photograph image of say for example a cat. Cat is something like this. This is our cat. You have a cat like this. You have image of a cat. So you uh, let's say we start from uh, how does the ear let let uh, uh, let's uh, take a few of the images of uh, a few other images as well. We have a uh, we have a cat's image and let's say we have a dog's image as well. This is our dog. Does it look like a dog? Yeah. And then we have, uh, say, for example, a horse. Then you you have the images, photos in form of a digital data. Now our decision tree, let's say, it starts like this. How does the tree look? Uh, the ears look like. Uh, 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 let me say that. Uh, look at the ears. Pointing or round according to this images I'm talking about according to these images or you know uh, long for example we also have a rabbit like this so if the images are pointing then the, it, there's a possibility that it is either, you know, we have the image, the ears of this uh, horse are pointing and the images of cat are pointing. You have to tell me the difference between the image, the, the ears of the cat and the uh, horse. That, that thing will come over here. That next question will come here. And if it is round here, ears, then we have to see according to this data that we have right now. We don't have another image that has an animal with a face or uh, the round uh, ears. So we can't say anything about it. We just simply say that it's a dog. OK, on just on the basis of ears. And then if it is long ears, we don't have any other image over here, which says that it is any, anything other than the rabbit. Therefore, just go to the conclusion. And that is that is rabbit. But if, it, if the ears are pointing, then we make we use some other feature. Right now we have decided just on the shape of the ears and if the ears are round, then they are it's a dog. If the ears are long, it's a rabbit. And if it is, uh, uh, no, if the, uh, the ears are pointing, but then we look at the next feature. The next feature would be the face. Is the face, is the fa uh, 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 face long or, uh, in the next in the, in the next uh, feature that we can use is that is the face of the cat is round and the face of the uh, horse is long so we check the next thing that is face is long face is round when the face the ears are pointing and the face is round then it must be a cat but if the face is uh, long, just like a horse, then it must be, and the ears are pointing, then it must be a horse. And this does not go anywhere, and we don't need it here. So, uh, what we have done is that we will start from the feature uh, of the ears, where the, whether the ears are pointing round, long, and if the ears are pointing, then we say that check the face. If the face is long or round, if the face is round, then it must be cat. If the face is long, then it must be horse. On the other hand, if we go to the round ears, then we simply say that the only animal with the round ear is this dog. So it must be dog. Then we go to the ears. If the ears are long, then we go to the this one, that is the rabbit. So what we have done over here is that we have constructed a decision tree. So we code this, we make a program that what it does is that we show it some image, we send it some digital for image in digital form of an animal, and it checks on these features 
that well, how does the look the ears look how does the face look and then based on that uh, outcome it makes decisions and it checks further features and then finally final decision is made whether it is a cat or a horse so this whole thing this technique this complete thing is known as decision tree so a random forest basically consists of several such uh, trees decision trees and then those of those trees is considered and the majority by, based on the majority vote a decision is made uh, that whether the, the, the uh, what is the output what is the what if that as getting my point so this is what the random forest consists of in this case it was the outlook example and we have considered the you know uh, image of a uh, of an animal so the decision trees is that just like that thing but we don't have actual trees in our case we have a program like for example you can see that one of the programs over here and uh, i will ask you guys to try this out on python let's first try to understand this uh, we have to import a library from sklearn the sklearn is the scikit learn and we call it sklearn from uh, sklearn.tree we import the decision tree classifier decision tree classifier is actually a classifying algorithm it classifies things into different categories then we import the uh, the second the other library that is numpy that's used for handling mat matrices and the numbers and things like that the related to matrices and arrays and we have used this, used this numpy library uh, also in our previous classes so we import two libraries sklearn that is the main library that we are trying to understand here in these classes and the numpy that we've already used and that's used that's used for uh, handling the arrays and and uh, uh, stuff like that okay now after that we define these uh, the target and the feature define the features and the target variable fifth line fifth says features is equal to temperature and target says where target is actually the uh, output okay now the sample data is this is in form of an array so what is in this array actually data consists of uh, it's a multi-dimensional array it consists of in fact four arrays this one array data consists of four arrays 15 and then quote the temperature 15 is the room temp the ambient temperature the temperature of in the environment basically what this program is trying to do is that uh, we will Mm, uh, tell it temperature and based on that temperature it will suggest that you should wear this kind of dress suppose it's uh, 15 degrees centigrade and then you should wear coat if it is 30 degrees centigrade you should wear t-shirt so this 15 is the temperature and th this is this temperature is in centigrade because we normally follow the centigrade temperature i don't know what that is in fahrenheit how much is 15 degrees centigrade in fahrenheit 15 is pretty much cold according to the centigrade. Sarim, yes, Sarim, can you please tell me how much is in Fahrenheit, this uh, 15 degrees Celsius? Roughly. Uh, can you repeat that? Uh, aren't you listening to what I'm saying? Oh, I, I, was, I didn't really like fully catch it. You were pretty occupied. You were doing something else. Please try to get and keep your focus here in the class. Okay, Ahmed, please, can you please tell me uh, how much is 15 Celsius in Fahrenheit? 60. 60, okay. So 15 is actually pretty cold, pretty much cold. And 30 is, you know, it's quite hot. Uh, but not too hot. It's, uh, it's reasonable. Anyways. So 15, so we, we have other data. The data consists of temperatures and the kind of dressing you should have uh, uh, corresponding to that temperature. That I think is in this data. Now after that, uh, we uh, separate the features in the target. X is equal to row zero for row in the data. And we extract uh, this complete, we extract the uh, temperature values from the data. We, we extract this uh, uh, 15 from the temperature value and this row this row one is written over here we extract the uh, the type of dressing that we use, we should use that is coat t-shirt or co uh, or the t-shirt from there so we extract that what we have to wear 
that that is the decision that is stored in y and the temperature that is stored in x now after that we create the decision tree classifier and the name of that uh, decision tree classifier is clf we create our decision tree classifier named clf using the decision tree classifier uh, method of the sk learn and then after that we reshape this uh, x into a 2d array with one column so for that we use this np dot array x reshape one minus one and one we make it a, a, a two dimensional array with just one column previously it was three dimensional array uh, train the model on the data and for that we use clf dot fit x y x is the data the rows that is the temperature and y are the decisions corresponding decisions now after that CLF is trained after this in line number 27. This CLF, which is a decision tree classifier, it is trained in line number 27. Okay, after that, we give it a specific example. Uh, we say that new temperature is 26. And then after that, uh, we what we do is we reshape the temperature array in 2D as uh, X new is equal to NP array new temperature dot reshape. We make it a 2D array like that. So that the shape of that that this shape is actually needed by the classifier uh, over here. Then after that, we send this data in line number 36 to our uh, decision tree classifier. And the name of the decision tree classifier is CLF. CLF dot predict x new and then zero. This is the format for that, and it gives us uh, some answer. That is prediction. That uh it will be whether it's a coat or a t-shirt or whatever that decision is stored in prediction then we display the result uh that we have set first of all given the temperature to the uh, uh program that is 26 degrees centigrade and then this program will tell us what we should wear uh, in line number 38 it says that should you wear a coat or a t-shirt so the prediction whatever the result is that it will be uh, displayed over there based on the temperature. So this is this program is you know, doing that thing. Let's uh, look at it again in a bit detail. Uh, have you guys uh, uh, have, have I shared this program with you guys earlier or I haven't shared yet? Wait a second. Let me share it with you. Let me send this program. Okay. So uh, I have shared the file with you. Have you guys received that file? I have shared the file through WhatsApp group. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you run that file and uh, go through that file and and your assignment that I will. I am assigning you right now and you have to submit it to the next Friday. You have to modify this program in such a way that uh, you have to add more thing features to it, more details to it. Right now, uh, you know, uh, it's sweater. 
if you can see my screen uh, i have started sharing okay so if you look at the screen over here from scale and after that we have in line number 9 to 14 line 9 till 14 you can see that 15 it's sweater then 25 full sleeve shirt for 5 it is coat you have to improve this program and uh, that guy who will improve it better whose program will be better than the other people that he will get more better marks more marks or better score you have to modify this uh, you can add gui in it it the sky is the limit it up depends on you what you have to do and uh, what you have to do is uh, that you have to make a program it asks the user uh, to and tell us the temperature and based on the temperature the program suggests that you should wear this thing you can add graphical user interface in it you can maybe add images in it that uh, it displays the image of a sweater instead of just writing a text over there things like that it depends on you uh, and you have to submit it by friday positively before the class then you will be graded for that okay have you uh, understood all three of you or uh, are there any questions about this as well if there are any questions please get them clarified right now we have assigned you an assignment okay yes or no please acknowledge yes yes haitam okay haitam what about you and sarim yeah okay i have assigned you uh, i have officially assigned you an assignment and you have to based on this program you have to understand this program thoroughly run it and understand this program and then modify it and make an improved version you can add a graphical user interface in it you can add more features to it sky is the limit the person who will make better program will get better score and uh, it's going to be a tough hard grading for this program so you have to put in a lot of effort for that so uh, let's quickly go through this this again first of all i make this uh, 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 you know first of all i define this these features as temperature is the only feature and the target is what we have to wear and then after that we give it the data data consists of temperature and the corresponding uh, the corresponding dress that we have to wear sweater or full sleeve shirt or a coat or a t-shirt for 5 degrees centigrade you can say it's coat for 15 it's a sweater for 30 it's a t-shirt and so on and so forth then line number 17 18 it picks up the rows out of it the temp x is for the temperature and the y is for the target that is sweater full sleeve coat whatever then after that we initially define this clf as a decision tree classifier and after that we reshape the arrays because it is a requirement of this decision tree classifier we have to uh, use this reshape method otherwise it won't it won't work with this decision tree classifier so we have to make it a 2d array that is needed by the decision tree method and then after that we use the fit fit method over here in line number 27 it take picks up our data x from here that is the temperature and the corresponding labels that is the sweater or uh, corresponding uh, our target data that is sweater full sleeve coat whatever that goes in y and the temperature goes in x and fit automatically trains our decision tree the decision tree is created by decision tree classifier we haven't ourselves created that decision tree classifier has done it for us we are using this uh, method from the sk learn library it's it has a lot of details as well in it we don't have to go into that detail the, the uh, library has done that for us after that we are using the fit method it trains that classifier and then after that when it has been trained we use that uh, uh, classifier in line number 30 here you can add something like you know you can ask the user you can prompt the user and ask please enter the temperature and the user enters the temperature here we have are haven't entered anything we just fix this data of minus 10 we can change it in our program manually then after that the data is sent to the uh, that is converted into the 2d array that is needed by the uh, decision tree classifier in line number 33 over here and then after that x new is sent to our clf predict method clf predict method it basically Uh, gives us the prediction that what we should wear for this particular temperature that is this minus 10 so we should uh, it the mm, minus 10 goes into the classifier decision tree classifier and the decision tree classifier tells us that based on its structure uh, uh, this is the decision that you should wear this thing t-shirt or a coat or a sweater or whatever and then that is displayed let's run it 
so what it says is that you should wear a coat you should wear a coat or a t-shirt so for example uh, this is the if you look at this uh, these lines from 9 to 10 it has just this amount of data 15 degree centigrade sweater and 5 it's coat we have entered minus 10 over here minus 10 is below 5 and it is saying that we should wear a coat this means that decision tree has given us the right answer because minus three is much more colder than the uh, even the five degrees centigrade for which coat is recommended. So let's modify this program because I don't have that command over here that I'm not asking the user right now. I have to modify the code. You can in your assignment. What you can do is you can update your code so that you can prompt the user and ask what is the temperature, what temperature uh, you know you want to ask dressing for etc etc you can add graphical user interface etc if you like to but that will be that will be needed for your marks actually so uh, what temperature should i write over here any suggestions from you guys yes sir sarim are you there okay sarim is not there Okay, Ahmed, can you please tell me what temperature should I write? Uh, My silk and liquid. Yes, what should I write? 30. 30 is for the t shirt, and it's already there in the database, uh, data set. So, something other than that, let's put something other than that. Let's say, uh, le let's give it a tough time. We have 25 and we have 35. So for 25, it says we should wear full sleeve shirt and for 30, it says that we should wear T-shirt. Well, let's give it a difficult choice. Let's say 26. Let's see what it says. Whether it is a full sleeve shirt or a T-shirt. It says full sleeve shirt. For 25, it says full sleeve shirt. OK, now let's try, uh, say, for example, we try 29. And the T-shirt starts for 30. Let's give it 29. And it says T-shirt, so that's good. You know, our decision tree is quite smart. For 29, it does not say full sleeve shirt. It says T-shirt. It's because 29 is close to 30. Now let's give it something in between that. Uh, no, uh, 25 and 30, that is uh, 27.5. What does it say? Let's give it tough time. It says full full sleeve shirt. For 28. It t says T-shirt. Even for 27.5, it says full sleeve shirt. For 25, it says full sleeve shirt. And even for 27.5, it's also saying full sleeve shirt. And But for 28, it says T-shirt. So this is the, okay, this is actually, you can see over here in the console window. This is the prediction of our, of our, uh, um, uh, of our algorithm that we, we are telling it the temperature and it is, suggesting that you should wear this particular dress okay so this is inside in this program so what you guys have to do is uh, have you, are you guys have you guys uh, uh, run your code please share your screen and show it to me one by one uh Hatham, can you please first share your screen Item. Okay, so We can see your screen now. Please run this program. Is it working in your PC also? I think so. so. If you run it, it's saying that code and and the temperature is what is the temperature? That's change this temperature. Make it something like you know 50 degrees centigrade and see what it says. Code. For 50. 
Oh, negative 50. My bad. In line number 30. Yeah, I wrote negative 50. T-shirt. Okay, T-shirt. For negative 30, it will go, give you code, but for positive 30, it, it will give you T-shirt. Now, Sarib, are you with us right now or you have you left this class? Oh, I'm here. Okay, can you please share your screen? Okay. I just wanted to see if you have run this program because actual thing that you have to do is by your own effort. When you will be doing your assignment, then you will ma be making your actual ma uh, decision tree program. And uh, my advice to all of you is that you have to stick to uh, my uh, uh, instructions. My instructions are that you have to make this, take this program as your uh, uh, base program, base code, and you have to build upon this. You have to make a decision tree. You can add a, diff a number of different functionality in it. You can add graphical user interface. You can add import different libraries. That's up to you. But the basic thing or the basic structure of your program should be this decision tree. You should be using the decision tree classifier method in it. You have to import sklearn in your program. And then uh, basic what I want you guys to make program is that you have to ask the user the temperature. And then after that, it gives you the uh, what you should wear and you can add more things uh, functionality to, to your program. Uh, maybe you can show the T-shirt or whatever through using graphical user interface. Maybe you can add some buttons in your and some window opens up and then it prompts you there that what is the temperature or the user types in the temperature or clicks some buttons, etc. That's up to you. You can add those things, but the underlying code should be the same that I've shared with you. Uh, I mean, the basic structure should be the same. You have to modify this and build upon this. That will be your actual learning that I expect from you during this week. OK, so can you please sign run, run it? It's working. It's working fine. It should be working. It's the same code that I've just shown you. So any questions about the assignment? Uh, no. OK, so there are no questions, so I'm uh, ending this today's session here, but I expect you guys to please share your working code through email to me. You have to share the uh, .py file with me in running condition and a bit of you know description or screenshots. You can copy paste in your email in your uh, Google email. You can do that. You can if you don't want to make a separate report for that screenshots of uh, the code in its working condition you have to do this by coming friday before the class only then i will grade you for this uh, assignment okay so uh, if there are no questions further then uh, i will end this today's session and have a nice yeah. week ahead and let's meet again inshallah on saturday okay so have a nice week Bye. 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 Bye.